see I'm sort of packing up uh, some of my things here because once we elect our chair, I would sit down, oh, sorry, I apologize. I would sit down there and the chair would replace me for the rest of these uh, of these elections. Uh, and so uh, the, there are no more uh, candidates uh, to stand for a chair, so we are going to be going uh, into our voting uh, for the chair. Um, and so this vote will be done uh, in uh, priority, and we are uh, asking you for your top three choices. Um, and so for each choice, whether it be first, second, or third, uh, press the corresponding number uh, of the uh, candidate listed on, um, on your screens in front of you. Um, and so if you, if you press on your voting device, if you press it more than three times, uh, the choices uh, will be invalid after the third. So it won't take your first three choices. Is uh, everyone clear? Are there any questions in terms of uh, voting on your devices? Okay, great. Um, wait for that. Ambassador Christensen, please, uh, please, the director. Um, the microphone. So I just need you to stand and then activate your microphone. Could you could you activate your? Could you could you activate the microphone on here? Yeah. So I got. Yes. Yes. Okay, it worked. <laughs> um, I just wanted to know how do we vote? I mean, like, what what's going on? Really? So essentially, uh, where it's going to be a, a, a priority Thank you. Uh, ballot, right? For your first, second, and third choice of the candidates that you should see, you should be able to be called seeing at that on your screen, right? The six. Yeah. No, we have those. Okay. So, uh, you uh, for each choice, the first, second, and third, you press and. I could be wrong because it's the first time we're doing this, right? Um, <laughs> you press the uh, corresponding number that you see on the screen for your choice, uh, right? So let's say that there were, let's say that there were, were ten names, right? Um, and if I was running uh, for chair and I was number eight, if you selected, if you wanted me to be chair uh, as your first choice, you select number eight. Right, and then your second choice would be number nine, and then your uh, third choice would be number seven, depending on who you who you want. Does everyone understand, Councilor Kim? Um, would I be able to retract my votes in any way because I pressed the wrong number? Um, no. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> One second. <laughs> um, what channel are we supposed to be on? Sorry, pardon me. She's one of those people where she had no one now because. So, which board does she have? Councillor uh, Sivakumaran. Sorry, I just want to know how many youth councillors are there? In terms of youth councillors, we have approximately 40. Oh no, it's just concerning because I don't think everyone voted, that's why. 
Well, that's my thing. I, I, I want to address that all in a, in a sec. Um, I think we can vote again, given there are some uh, problems in terms of people not knowing how the voting worked. <laughs> and I apologize for that. Um, so I think I, I, I explained it sort of while some people were voting, because some people thought they, they knew or knew and voted anyways. Um, so I will explain again after I take a question from Ambassador Sir Chad. So uh, one suggestion uh, and then one question, maybe uh, for the voting, uh, before the voting starts, just to announce now you're, you're allowed to vote at this time, yeah, okay. and then once we get it in, um, to stop it. Uh, secondly, in terms of a question, uh, thinking that, recognizing that I think the chair, the position of chair, there's a, lot of, there's a large number of magnitude, I think, to being the chair uh, of the City Youth Council of Toronto. I think it might be prudent, uh, depending if people will allow it, to actually be able to ask a few questions of just the chair candidates for the Youth Council itself but not for the vice chair or committee chairs. I think that might be helpful maybe for uh, some people uh, when coming to their decision. So um, what I'm going to do, uh, taking what you said um, into consideration, um, and I was speaking uh, to uh, Tyler about this. So when the vote opens, I will call uh, the vote uh, as opened. When, and then I will ask for a final call right before, because what happens is you uh, punch in your three numbers, right? Let's say eight, nine, and 10. But if you decide not to, or to change your vote while the vote is open, you'd have to submit a brand new set. And that means three new numbers. Right? And so when that happens, these new three numbers uh, become your vote, and the previous three are knocked off. Is that clear in terms of voting, re-voting within the time period? Everybody's good? Um, what I will do, and this is only provided that all of the candidates for chair are in agreement, is to open the council floor for 10 minutes of uh, question and answers. Um, I, I, I would like to limit the, um, the questions and the answers to, uh, let's say, 20 seconds a piece. Uh, just so, and I'll give you, I'll, I'll allow for 10 minutes, and as soon as we hit the 10 minute mark, the question and answer period will have ended, and we'll go straight into the vote. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if it's necessary to have this question and answer period for every uh, committee position. I think for chair, maybe for vice chair people like it we can do, but um, we are uh, only given a specific period of time to be here today. So I think it's important to move along in that way. Is, is, is everybody on board with that? No objections. Um, Councillor Kumar. Um, will the questions be directed to individual councillors or everyone running for chair as a whole? Um, I, I think in the interest of fairness, it would be directed to all candidates and then whichever candidates feel that they wish to respond and each candidate should have the opportunity to answer each question um, each candidate can respond uh, to a question posed to the floor and that way it's the most fair because you know we, we try not to have people attacking each other I mean, it's this is this is your floor not mine right uh, but um, I think that's the, the fairest way to, to go about it um, so with that said um, the time has started for our 10 minute question and answer period. Um, would anybody like to ask a question? Uh, the first hand I saw was um, Councillor Nader, but right after we'll go to Ambassador Sajanik, and then someone had a hand behind Councillor uh, Navid, and then Councillor Hogan. So, uh, Councillor Nader, 20 seconds. Uh, I just wanted to uh, note from the chair candidates if they had any ideas in terms of keeping in mind this is a youth organization. Uh, there are some folks who, you know, they'll say they're attending an event and then they'll go and do their homework. How are you as a chair candidate going to organize young people? I've worked in a lot of youth organizations. I know it's a challenge. I'd like to hear some ideas. Thanks. Any counselors wish to ask, any counselors or ambassadors wish to respond? Um, Ambassador Puri, 20 seconds. Thank you for your question. I just wanted to address that explicitly by saying, as I'm representing for United Way, a lot of what we do is um, children or youth, 
in high schools have implemented programs in different schools. So something that, how we can attack that idea is really implement, engage students, especially within their high schools, within their communities, in community involvement events, even extracurriculars around there in their communities, and that's how you engage. And once you engage the students, that can be tell them about the events. Thank you. Thank you. Time has expired. Um, anyone else? Uh, Councillor Sivakumara. Sorry, just to answer your question, I think it's quite simple in how we would approach uh, the issue of, you know, if students are busy, because we are students, so we are busy in the same schedules they might be. And for example, like if we're taking the SATs, right, if they're on certain dates, so that if everyone's having on the same date, then we'll know, okay, we should not run a meeting that day. And I think that's a pretty simple and effective solution. Thank you. Any other responses from candidates? Um, Councillor, I'm uh, oh, sorry, Ambassador O'Reilly. <coughs> Thank you for your question. Um, two things. First, we have to create diverse ways for students to get involved, youth to get involved. If they're really busy, maybe allow them to get interactive, um, um, get involved online through Twitter, Facebook, other means. Also, um, we need to give agency to you by letting them take charge in other things because when they feel like they're actually actively needing something, then they're more committed because they feel Thank like they're actually your time time expired. themselves. We now move to other questions or first other answers from I'm uh, uh, Thanks for the question. Personally, I think it's just a networking issue. Like, if you can network yourself with different organizations and people that are all over schools, they can tell us when the most appropriate time for an event would be, and therefore we can hold it and therefore the maximum capacity as well. I'd like to build upon this idea and advocate for online, you know, just efforts to you know, get youth involved. Thank you, um, um, Councillor Christensen. Uh, Ambassador Christensen, my apologies. Um, I would like to ask just all of the people who are running, what about mental health? I mean, obviously, um, using mental health, I, I believe that we need to find differences in the way that we um, deal with mental health issues other than medication. So what do you guys think about that? And how would you guys um, uh, kind of like move that into kind of like your beliefs and kind of like integrate it into this group itself? Any re responses from uh, candidates? Um, we'll go to Councillor Zhao first, then to Ambassador Arali, and then to uh, Councillor Sivakura. Councillor Zhao, 20 seconds. I believe that what we should do is that we should reduce the stigma. We should work hand in hand with all youth across Toronto and make sure that, the, that everyone is treated equally, that those with mental uh, health issues are not different from everyone else. They aren't looked down upon, but rather we're at an equal level so that we can respect them and make sure and advocate for that respect. Thank you. Um, uh, Ambassador Arali, you next. Um, so first we have to create decompression times in the different kind of work that we do because we deal with really heavy issues. So we have to allow space for people to be able to recenter themselves. But also, we also have to be able just to talk about it. Um, we started this campaign in my university called called BS of because it's BS how we the stigmatization of mental health. We need to challenge that and we need to be proactive. Thank you. Um, I believe I mentioned Councillor Sivakumaran and then to Ambassador Puri. Um, I think uh, one thing is we could promote policy and we could say that you know we are against discrimination by mental health issues, but at the same time I would just like to bring up it's not necessarily a municipal responsibility. So I don't want to go out of our powers as city youth council, so that's another point I just want to bring up. Thank you, um, Ambassador Fury, and then Councillor Wesser, Thank and you. then Ambassador Lee, sorry. Thank you for your question. To address your question, um, in my view, I think it's really important to raise awareness. That's why we're here, to give youth a chance to express their voice, and that's what we're doing intentionally here. So by raising awareness, it could be through social media and networking, but also through different online campaigns, which will definitely address the whole issue of mental health. And us promoting it will also increase that as well. Thank you. Um, Councillor, I believe I said Councillor Wester first, and then Councillor Lee. doesn't okay. matter. Oh, I just said set an order, so I don't want to deviate from that. Um, okay, um, it's as Councillor Zhao, Zhao said, um, it, there is a stigma issue. Um, there, it, there is a purpose for destigma. We would have to work to destigmatize this issue. And there is also, we, um, people with mental illness who need specific help. We have to be able to provide that help. Thank you. The time's expired. Um,
Am I certain? Um, thanks for your question. Uh, firstly, I think that we have to embody that sort of spirit in everything that we say. We could always like post statuses on Facebook and stuff. As well, we should always like mobilize our committee, no, our community committees, as well as possibly the arts and culture to get involved with organizations that promote this sort of thing in the community so that we can sort of work at it together and promote what's right. Thank you. Um, and these are new questions. Um, so we'll first have... Um, Sorry, yeah, I didn't know you wanted to speak. Um, part, sorry, um, Councillor Sujay. Uh, quick question: How do you uh, how do you intend on actually working with and collaborating with the entire City Youth uh, Council of Toronto and actually getting other people's feedback and opinions right here on the floor in between uh, Youth Council meetings? Any candidates wish to respond? Um, Ambassador Arali. So I think we need to do work outside and inside of meetings. First of all, we need to. Um, I think we need to organize some sort of socials just to get to know each other on a personal basis, but also um, get connected online as a Facebook group. I think I started about getting Chromebooks. Connecting online during meetings and off meetings is a good way to um, stay connected. Um, but also kind of organizing things, like I said, outside of meetings, um, just to be able to have a serious but also the non serious um, relationship to kind of um, be able to know each other better, to, make, uh, to work together to make better decisions. Thank you. Um, before uh, anything proceeds, I'm just going to stop the clock for one second. So before, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll add another five minutes, let's say, to this question answer period. But what I'll do is I'll have a speaker's list, and those are the other people with questions, and uh, they'll, they'll get to post those and get responses. So um, are there any counselors, uh, people who aren't running, uh, but uh, counselors who'd like to ask questions, and in particular those who haven't already asked the question? So we have... Councillor Kim, Councillor Kumar, Councillor Naveed, thank you, Councillor Miller, um, Ambassador, Councillor Tello, that you don't, you don't, you're not saving your assigned seat. with questions for the chair candidates. Is that all? Okay. Um, and so I believe <coughs> Ambassador Puri wanted to answer a question. Thank you for your question. So in addition to what was being said, I do believe that external meetings as well as internal meetings would be extremely beneficial. And as well, I'm very approachable to everyone's suggestions and ideas. And if elected, I would as well I'd like to meet everyone personally if I haven't already done so. So that would also be important. Also in the different committees, I would try to go to each of the committee meetings as well, so I have a well-rounded view of what's been done in the council. Thank you. Um, Councilor Zhao. I think to solve this problem, we just have to be on a level of mutual respect, where we respect each other's opinions, and where we uh, see that other people, their voices are just like ours, and that we will talk to them outside and see them on a more than professional level, but rather as on a personal level, and see them as people valuable to us and valuable to the city. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Wisser. Um, this, we are all in contact. Um, I would have to, I would want to meet, as same as Councillor Curry, I would want to meet with everyone personally. Um, Many of us are in touch and interconnected with each other. Um, we are friends or go to the same school. And it thank would you be important. Time's expired. Um, Hi, um, thank you for your question. Um, I think that as a chair, I will obviously sort of try to get a connection with everyone. But it's not about me. It's about you guys, too. So I'm going to strongly advocate and encourage sort of you know intermingling between you guys, too, whether online or in person, so that we can maximize our creative output. Thank you, Councillor Sivakuran. Uh, I would advocate that uh, we have more mandatory meetings, or at least more organized meetings in the committee. I honestly don't think one meeting a month is enough to discuss all the issues that affect youth in the city, and that's my stance on that issue. Thank you. Any other candidates wishing to respond to the question posed? Okay, moving on to a new question from Councillor Isa. In the past few months, there's been a lot of um, violence on the youth, especially, and, and 
in this, uh, communities are, that have uh, marginalized youth. And in case you notice, there was two, uh, two shootings in the city of West End a few years ago in Eaton. There's a, there's a massive shooting in Scarborough in the summer. So I just wanted to know what would you do as a chair to solve, to address these issues facing the youth that are living Thank in you. social housing? Thank you. Councillor, time's expired. Um, we'll start with Councillor Xiao. Please sir. Uh, since we are youth, uh, we are able to connect with youth on a different level than everyone else. We can talk to them, we can spread the word, we can make sure that violence in the future is looked down upon so that the same does not repeat again, and we mold the people of today into the people of tomorrow that we want for our children to know as Thank adults. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Siva Kumar. Unlike Rob Ford, who wants to cut funding to specialized programs that help troubled youth, I would fully advocate that we do invest in these programs. They're more effective, they help students, and really, these are the programs we should be investing in, and I completely disagree with City Council's current position on the issue. Thank you, Councillor uh, Wasser, and then to Ambassador Curie. Um, we do uh, essentially the same two points, but we, because we are youth, we are able to connect on a more personal level. It's not top down, it's as equals. And we, do, as a city, although I do not know what extent we are able to speak, what, what extent of uh, influence we have, but as a city, we do need to invest. Thank in you. Social programs. Sir, oh, sorry, Ambassador Puri. Thank you for your question. I would like to stress that I'm a United Way ambassador, and United Way funds for 200 member charities and organizations in Toronto. These are local grassroots grassroots charities that are helping people of these vic the victims as well as their families. So as United Way ambassador and with a direct connection with United Way, I can ensure and start facilitating those programs that those type of charities can offer programs Thank to help you. people like that. Thank you, Councillor um, Ambassador Lee. Yes. And then to okay, yeah. Ambassador Raleigh and then Ambassador Lee. Yeah. So yeah, so our campus was five minutes away from the Danzig shooting, um, and working in communities around the Scarborough campus before and after, there's still the same thing that I touched on my speech, the, the, um, the system has been failing you. And pumping more money is not just going to be the only solution. We need to rethink about the people who are even in here in the first place. This is a good first step, because right now, unfortunately, council, city council does not represent Thank the you. people in the community, so we need to take the charge. Um, uh, anyone else wishing to? Thanks. I believe that's actually a very important question. Um, obviously, as chair, I would advocate very strongly for more funding for youth rehabilitation programs because they're proven to work as well. We would work with organizations such as United Way to and stand with them to just basically to work with them, coordinate their efforts with them, and get more done. Thank you. Any more uh, uh, chair candidates wish to, to respond? If not, then we move to the question posed by Councillor Kim. Um, clearly, all of us here are students, and it seems like all of the candidates for chair are especially early, especially, I mean, like, this, uh, especially youth ambassadors. So I would just like to ask, like, how would you manage your time and dividing up between all the other organizations that are going ahead, as well as school on top of it? Thank you. Um, we'll go with. Uh, Ambassador Arali first, then to Councilor Jean, then to uh, So right now I'm actually employed full-time in my student union as the Vice President External, and civic engagement is one of the key aspects of my job. Um, because I work in a student union, I have to cut courses a lot, so my focus is my job engaging um, youth, engaging students, and, and the role as chair. It will allow me to even further my job. So yeah, school's not going to be an issue at all. Thank you. Um, uh, Councillor Zhao. Uh, so what I do is that I am a part of various clubs. I'm part of cadets. I'm a pilot. And I spend 20 hours a week on flying. But the thing is, throughout all these experiences, especially with a less heavy timetable this year, I'm willing to work with everyone and work and put all my effort into this so that this can become something that we are all proud of. Thank you. Thank you. Ambassador Puri, and then to uh, Ambassador Lee. I don't have any time limiting restrictions throughout the week and I, anything that I do I ensure that I commit 100% and this is why I'm here and this is why I'm running for a chair. So I can ensure that because I'm running for a chair I will be able to commit 100% of the time, all the time, to this UICTU. Thanks for your question. Um, 
I don't really have much of an issue, or else obviously I wouldn't have fun. Obviously, some of you guys can tell that I have quite a bit of spare time because I try to make like legitimate connections with all of you, right? So even if that's not, something does happen, I just put this as you know a priority and possibly you know just cut out something else that would wouldn't serve as much as a priority. Is. Thank you. That's a pretty question. But, uh, are there any other candidates wishing to respond? Pardon me. I'm sorry, please. Can, can I say this to um, uh, Okay, to the issue, to the question. Um, I go to a school with a much more flexible schedule. Um, I can work at home if need be. I do not have to work at school. Um, my teachers would allow me to work when necessary, if that means taking time off, taking a long lunch, or taking time off school. That is an option for me, and I have a very flexible schedule. I would not have run if I did not have, think I have the time. Thank you. Um, Councillor Stewart Kruger. Although I'm, I'm engaged in other events, I consider the City Youth Council my absolute priority. I was elected by the students, and because of that, I will. This is my number one priority. Everything else will change around City Youth Council, and that's my mindset for it. Thank you. Any other uh, candidates wishing to respond? If not, then would you like to be added to the, the speaker's list? And that will be the last speaker for um, this question and answer paper. Um, um, I'm just wondering whether the uh, question period is going by time or by speakers list right now. Right now it's going to be going by speakers list, but I'm going to be really, really strict with the time. Okay. Um, so, uh, sorry. And so, um, and that's one thing. When I'm talking, the clock's still going, right? So you have to try to account for that. But um, yeah, I can really strict with the time because we have to move on with the other. Uh, I how many for the question? So 20, 20 seconds for the question, 20 seconds for the answer. If you go over the time, I have a button here that will turn off your microphone. Right, okay. So um, as you said, the speakers list. So I have uh, 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 Councillor uh, Kumar, Councillor Naveed, Councillor Miller, um, Councillor Tello, Councillor Corbin, Councillor Lee, and Ambassador Christensen on the speakers list. That's a lot. So um, let's try to move through this uh, quickly. Um, are you, uh, Councillor, are you responding to our question? Go ahead. All right, so all the candidates have spoken about their resume. Their no, no, sorry, I, I was, I, I apologize. <laughs> Councillor Sivakumar had a question about it. So. Sorry, I just want to know if it was possible to shorten this because I understand there are many questions, but I, we have to get through a lot of other positions, and I don't want other groups to feel alienated because we're just talking about the chair. Okay, um, it's, it's, it's tough to tell people who thought they could speak that they now no longer can. Um, so, uh, uh, taking that into consideration, should we, sorry, do you think we should be shortening this uh, speedy time to 15 seconds maybe, or I would just, it might degrade the quality of the answers, but at least it's time to, to get something out, right? Um, uh, further, further questions?